It's better than Blood Origins. <laughs> that is about the highest praise I have for this show. <laughs> It is a low bar, I admit, but it is still one that the show struggles to clear. As Volume 1 of Season 3 of The Witcher is a rather whimpering swan song for Henry Cavill's last swing of The Witcher's silver sword before passing over the mantle to the new guy, who I'm sure will be <laughs> fully embraced by the audience. <laughs> I do not envy the guy who is going to be taking over that role, as pretty much the sole reason why The Witcher even got a second season was because of Cavill. And I've seen this before with Spartacus when the brilliant Andy Whitfield sadly passed on due to cancer. And the guy who came in to fill his sandals did as good as he possibly could. He really put in the effort, no doubt about it, but the chemistry just did not exist any longer. And if a show that was as brilliant as the first season of Spartacus was could not survive a main character change, <laughs> I have absolutely zero hope for The Witcher. But allow me to retract my tongue from Cavill's ass for at least a moment to talk about the actual show. The second season of The Witcher was okay, in my opinion. It improved in several ways from the first one, though it took yet further liberties, of course, with the overall setting and the story set out in the original books and also in the video games. Many fans were hoping that perhaps Season 3 might try to write course, as Season 2 somewhat had in terms of storytelling. This has not come to pass. At this point, we are so far removed from anything resembling source material that you might as well view this as an entirely separate entity, really. And that doesn't necessarily need to be the worst thing ever. The show has long since given up on any pretense that it's trying to reflect the source material, so maybe just throwing off any further attempts entirely would be beneficial, so long as you can replace it with a good story. And there, unsurprisingly, is where we run into a bit of a problem. <laughs> Yes, the, uh, the story is not very good. Um, season 3 focuses primarily on side characters and side plots, rather than the story of, well, the titular Witcher. Most of the time we spend watching Ciri whinge about something, which she does with great aplomb, or various other side characters' stories as they go about their daily lives and businesses, which usually has very little, if anything, to do with The Witcher. This is also reflected in the fact that I think there's a grand total of, what, four action scenes in the entire season? Barring a couple of minor fights, but even then I think we'll only increase the number by maybe to five or six over the course of five plus hours. It is a lot of talking, and the worst part is it is a lot of inconsequential, uninteresting talking. A problem yet further compounded by the fact that the caliber of the actors are spread wider than Kibbs's cheeks as is their performance as well. There are some standout good moments. Cavill does his best with what little he is given, honestly. And Graham McTavish delivers a solid, if uninspired, performance. But so many of the conversations sound... strange. As, as if a dress rehearsal where the actors are just, you know, saying their lines rather than acting them. Like the director just went with the first cut every time, and you now that might actually kind of be it in a way. The series feels strained, stressed, and with what we know of the testy relationship between Henry Cavill and the directors and the writers, it wouldn't be the craziest leap of logic to suggest that relations on the set might be a bit tense. 
as from what we've heard from behind the scenes, um, the directors and writers have spent most of their time trying to squeeze yet further diversity into the script rather than making an interesting or faithful one. And boy oh boy, at least in that respect they have most assuredly succeeded. I mean, it is the current year of course, and so a bit of good old fashioned diversity is expected. Ye old Poland is, well, looking like London more and more these days, as every other character is either gay, black, disabled, androgynous, or all four, and take every opportunity to mention and declare it, prompted or otherwise. The few breaks we do get from talking about the character's sexual proclivities are, to be fair, actually pretty alright. There is a rather creatively creepy monster, for example, in the basement of a castle that the Witcher has to dispatch. There is also a good lead up and a fight on a boat later on, where Ciri explains what she has learned, and provides a practical example of it, uh, looking out at the ocean and going like, okay, considering the depth, etc, it's probably maybe a Kelpie, and as they go further out, as she gets more information, she refines her guess. And then she and the Witcher have a decent fight against the little beastie. It's a decent little growing moment, and one of the few moments where Ciri comes across as, well, not whingy and absolute ass. As, of course, because yet again it is the current year. The entire plot now is to find a better way, where everyone will just Get along, you see. Everything will be peaceful and happy, and everyone's head is filled with cotton candy and fluff and shite. And so Siri is overwhelmed with the magnitude of the task before her, as she's got to save everyone. Elves, humans, monsters, presumably, and whomever else might be in need of protection. Twenty years ago, this might be an interesting twist, but seeing as it is currently the plotline of every single solitary anime for the last ten years as well, it's not really all that refreshing, frankly. And again, sadly, the action scenes are few and far between. You might think that a little bit of good old fashioned political intrigue would provide an interesting distraction, but it too is not very good, in large part because it's not acted very well. The characters, they, they come across as not quite interested in what they're doing, their deliveries are, are flat and lacking in enunciation and passion. Like they're discussing yesterday's dinner rather than the murder of a queen, for example. The entire last episode is dedicated to a mystery of sorts, where we see shots of Geralt and Yennefer banging each other violently and then going on over to a party, where they'll drop little hints about who the real bad guy is and how everyone is carrying on with their own plans, so that you can sit there going like, oh my god, I wonder who the bad person is. And then there is a, an incredibly ham-fisted revelation at the end, followed by a cliffhanger, as apparently Volume 2 of The Witcher will release in well, under a month, uh, the 27th of July, which makes me wonder what the point of splitting it up in the first place was. Um, enticing people to watch, I guess, but here's the problem. After having suffered my way through five hours of this, I am not very appreciative to be asked to wait for another month for some more action, frankly. And considering the season I just watched, even that expectation is likely to be met with nothing but the severest form of disappointment. <sighs> season 3 is probably not worth your time. And if you didn't like Season 2, or you were at best mixed on it, then it definitely isn't worth your time. In some ways, it's a bit of a sad end to Cavill's run as the titular main character, but at the same time, it's hardly a surprising one. 
the show has been moving more and more away from being a show about The Witcher and more and more about a show about Ciri and Yennefer and, well, if that was the case, that would be fine enough, but it's now more of a show about everyone else, whilst Geralt is a side character in his own story. A fairly common trope these days in certain brands of entertainment. In other words, if you don't know anything about The Witcher, this is not going to get you interested in the slightest. If you do like The Witcher, the video games or the books, this will merely insult you. And if you did like the first season, but it will mail on the second season, you're not going to like this one either. The only way I can imagine you'd find any real enjoyment in this is if you're actually not looking for a story about the Witcher, but rather everyone else around him. Because in that case, this season certainly does serve a purpose of sorts. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.